Hello. It is September 24th, 1990, and this is the first edition and the documentation of my yard. It's kind of a visual record of what happens year to year, season to season, and kind of talk about the plants in there and where I got them and just my feelings on the whole thing. This is my front lawn. The sprinklers are going right now. And this was put in fall before last. The old lawn when we moved in was not too bad, but it was in disrepair. So we run as a side cutter, removed the whole thing, rolled it up, and put it in the backyard in one of the raised beds. And put in the new lawn. And the old lawn take up the whole front used to take up the whole front yard and now is in a serpentine pattern. And the sprinkler system I finally got installed. Well the sprinkler system, the piping was all laid down when I put the the lawn in, but the sprinklers weren't actually hooked up until just a couple months ago. And it has been a big help. It's been a real hot year this year, so I've just been able to turn on the sprinklers and let it go. And there's separate sprinklers for the lawn and then separate sprinklers for the perimeter of the yard. I will hopefully film this again in the springtime, but there are 600 tulips and daffodils planted in this front yard around the perimeter. Quite a show of color in the springtime. The pink dogwood that blooms nicely in the springtime. Tr tree isn't in that great a shape, but I'm not going to cut it down. The leaves are already beginning to fall. I just raked the yard a little bit ago. I do need to get some more fertilizer on there, turning a little yellow in spots. That Japanese maple over there used to be up on the corner out by the street, but it was going to get too large and decided to move it over there, and it's pulling out of its shock. We've got some new leaves this year, looking very nice. The forsythia that is going to get like gangbusters should, um, should put on quite a show in the springtime. And there are some rhodes and camellias in the front, and hopefully we'll just grow up and kind of screen me from the street. This is the other Japanese maple that is going to have to be moved. I wasn't wasn't very good planning when I put it there because it is going to get too large and get into the driveway. This is the arbor Jeff built uh, early in the year. Very oriental feeling to it. I really like it. I like the style of the, the gate and the back to be changed just a little bit. But very nice effect on it. There's a light up there and seating and everything. I'm going to make it so that we can put a table in there and have high tea when we desire. This is the backyard, which is an utter disaster at the moment. Uh, we've been moving things in, and it's kind of catch-all right now. As you can see, it broke, just broke ground for the new pond. Uh, hadn't intended to start that exactly yet, but I needed a mound in the in the garden area, so I needed to excavate some dirt. Decided to start on it. Probably gonna be a muddy mess this winter. Just got the firewood in for the winter. Along that fence should be the arborvita hedge. I was going to put laurel hedge in, but Gary and Patty just gave me about 40 arborvita, so we're going to switch to that. This is my catalpa tree, one of the features of the garden that's been here for since we moved in. Obviously, it's been here for quite a while beautiful, beautiful tree, but I'm afraid I'm losing it. I'm not sure why. There are a couple limbs dying on the sunny side of it. I'm not sure if it's just water stress or exactly what's going on, but I certainly hope I don't lose it. This year I planted a couple of Akebia vines at the base of it that I would love to grow up around it and cover the trunk completely in its foliage and grow on up into the tree. The lilac over there in the corner on the corner of the house, and I just planted a clematis at the base of it to climb up into it. And 
establish itself. This is my great barber that got built this year. I'm just thrilled with it. The primary purpose of the fact that I wanted a gray barber uh, was to shade the greenhouse, which overheats very quickly in the summertime. Combating that two ways, I've got the Scarlet Runner beans growing on there this year, which is a nice, nice look. I really, it's a nice lush foliage on it and pretty red blooms. Um, but I am going to be putting more timbers across the top of the grape arbor and allowing the four grapes that are planted there to completely cover it and also shade the greenhouse. Very nice effect. I'll probably put a swinging seat in there. And this is the main garden. This area when we moved in was completely lawn. It was just grass from front to back. And eventually have transformed it into what we see now. And its transformation, I'm afraid, probably isn't through yet. The east border here, the east perennial border, was as of spring, just bare ground, um, including the pathway here. Uh, the pathway is made of broken concrete chunks, and Jeff had suggested this, suggested this some time ago, but I didn't think it was a very good idea. I didn't think it would look good. Yeah, I brought home a few chunks this springtime, and I do like the looks of it, and decided to go with it. Makes a very, very nice walk, and inexpensive, and it's completely interplanted with Corsican mint, which is taken hold very quickly and is going to cover in between the cracks completely. It's very nice to walk on. Nice minty fragrance. Weeds growing in it, which is a lot of fun trying to keep those pulled out. And that is the dahlia border that went in this year also. Uh, bought those from Vi down the street. There's 30 dahlias planted in there really enjoy them. A lot of people don't like dahlias in the garden because they're too bright of colors, I guess, but I think they're my nice fall color. Anyway, the east border was all dug by hand in the springtime and pretty well planted by March with the perennials. And this is its first year, so they aren't very full yet. By next year and the year after, they really should come into their own and make a very, very nice border. The raised area up there is made from the lawn in the front yard and the posts, or the edge of it, is poles that Max next door cut down when he was cutting his antenna poles down and he was going to have them hauled off and I thought I might be able to find something to do with them and that's what happened. I think that's probably going to become the rock garden. The plum trees I want to come out, uh, they make such a mess and don't add much to it. And I think I'm probably going to haul in some more rock and make that into a nice rock garden. The alder tree here was brought from Brookings at Christmas time when Jeff and I went. Just yanked it out of the ground, brought it back, and it was about five foot tall when I brought it in, and it's grown to about nine foot. People ask me why I want an alder tree in my yard. They're such a weed tree, but it reminds me of home, and I like the bark on it and, and the foliage. Colchicums were dug up from the backyard right next to the house. They were kind of lost in the iris, so I wanted them to be more noticeable. Brought them out. They're a pretty color for the fall. This is my honeysuckle, which is growing on the bird feeder. I figure if I can attract all the finches and all the other birds that come, and also the hummingbirds, which do like the honeysuckle. And this nice plant is so close to the path here in the evenings when it's in full bloom. Uh, the fragrance is very, very sweet. And it's also planted in an area, uh, my Adirondack chairs will go right in, through, right in there and also get the benefit of the honeysuckle fragrance. And the rock wall. That was finished a few weeks ago. Uh, 
brought in some yellow shale that my brother Paul brought from Mount Emily. And you're seeing the best part of the rock wall. This was the last part to go in, and by the time I finished with it, uh, it was finally starting to, I was finally starting to get the hang of it and realizing how, how it worked and how it should go together. Got the knack of it. This whole area used to, the dirt from that, this whole area used to be, last year, a mound that I had hauled in. Uh, last year, I had a company bring in 12 yards of topsoil and just mounded right out here. The area was so flat, I needed some character. And as I started the rock wall, I wasn't, I wasn't too sure how the whole thing would come together, and it just, it just happened this way. And consequently, I had to dig up the dirt by hand and mound it up into the kidney-shaped bed that you see. That was a quite a bit of work. This is the vantage point from the top of the garbage can um, that belongs to the apartments. Give me a view of the garden. That's the stone bench that I got from the alleyway behind Safeway over in, Gra in Eugene, behind Graves there too. I borrowed the forklift and brought it over. Nice granite bench. I really like it. We'll be able to use it from the perennial walk, from the pathway there, or from the new area that I'm creating. Uh, kind of a meditation garden, just in the middle of the whole thing. Be able to walk in from that direction and, and use it also. That and the coral bark maple be the focal point of that garden that was put in in the springtime also what a beauty when it gets older it's gonna be an outstanding specimen in the garden that ceanothus was brought from Brookings also at the same time that the alder tree was it's been moved once already in the garden this is its second Second home. I thought I'd lost it, but it's come back very nicely. I'm anxious for it to bloom in the spring. Very nice. And the ponderosa pines here, there are two of them. Uh, Debs gave us years ago, probably four years ago, and put in here. They have the potential to get absolutely huge in this garden. I don't really want that, so they'll probably stay tortured their whole lives, keeping them at a, maybe a height of 10 to 12 feet. I don't really want them much taller than that. Here is the pathway. It comes right up to the garbage can. It winds itself along the east border. This is the rose garden. It is going to be a formal rose garden. There are 35 bushes in there now. I think we'll probably stay at that. I may switch a few roses in and out to get the varieties that I really want. And there are rose bushes scattered throughout the rest of the garden. This one will be one that's staying. It's my Sunbright, and it won me my first first place trophy at last year's, a year before last, Rose Show at Valley River Center. Won me the first place trophy for novice entry. Beautiful rose. I do like it. The fall blooms are very nice. There are four test roses in the garden from Jackson and Perkins, which I'm t testing for them to see if they like. These are the I just brought these rocks in, actually from another part of the garden, but I need to go get some more. This'll Instead of concrete chunks, this section of the garden is going to be done in stones um, in the style of the Japanese gardens at Washington Park in Portland. There'll be lots of little stones interspersed in between these. Very nice effect. That's my thundercloud plum uh, brought in last year, put in last year as was the Japanese maple, which didn't fare very, very well this year. I'm afraid it got too hot for it out here. I'd like to plant some staghorn sumac on the back of the property, just an expendable tree, just to provide some shade back here. It does get so hot. This is 
the new pool for the meditation garden I just brought in in last week. I think it's from the 20s and 20s or 30s. Very mossy and I like the effect in the garden very much. It is going to be moved one more time over to new area created by the, when I put the mound in for the Blue Atlas Cedar created a little corner and that's where it is going to go. I think it'll be its final place to be put. Moved, this will be its third move in the garden. This area was going to be reseeded and lawn put in. Again the coral bark maple and the stone bench, granite bench. My Catonia Aster Henryanis that I that I moved over from another part of the garden for the rock for the for the new pool, but it was gonna be a nice backdrop for it. But I think I'll leave the Catonia Aster there and move the pool. This is the birch tree that Jeff and I planted on the day we signed the papers on the property topped it this year, want a little more spread on it, not go so upright. It's doing very well. My new Blue Atlas Cedar. I had one planted over here originally. <laughs> I ended up giving it to Ted because I realized it was just going to get so large it was just going to overpower the garden and shade the whole thing. So. I gave it to Ted, moved on to his property back here, and I bought a sculptured one that I can work with, keep fairly small. Nice oriental look to it. And the mound is the dirt excavated from the new pond in the backyard. This is the current view from the granite bench. There is a juniper planted on the other side of the pool here that I brought from Brookings and two Hinoki cypress that should border the gar this little garden in as they mature. This yucca was moved from another part of the garden also. When I made the rock wall, there was a walkway right into the open area, and I thought that kind of made it too accessible. I wanted it to be a, this area to be a destination, not just some place you could walk right into. You needed to be able to, to walk to the area. So. This area is going to be all rototilled, and there are 2,000 blue hyacinths, grape hyacinths, going to be in there. It might be a blue river, and a cobblestone path all the way along there, and it will allow, the, allow me to be able to walk into that area over there underneath the birch tree.